Hi, this is Scott Worthman. What I'd like to show you today is how to use VZone to prepare models for 3D printing. For many years I've been making models using a service called Shapeways and you can see some of the results here. Most of my models have to do with extending the zone tool to provide new directions or new lengths or various different connectors and bobs. If you follow the Facebook page for VZone, you may have seen some photos of these finished products. I've even used the same model files to do some of my own 3D printing. Here we see the printing software having loaded up one of those files for an orange strut. And here you can see the final results coming off of the printer and how well it fits into the zone balls. So let's go look at how to do this with VZone. The first thing you want to note is the version of VZOM you're running. VZOM 6.0 build 34 has added some new features to support the export for 3D printing. VZOM supports 3D printing by exporting a, a file format called STL. STL stands for stereolithography. Here we have a simple STL file. The format is very simple. It's just a set of triangles and for each triangle there are three vertices captured as vectors and one normal vector to indicate the orientation of the triangle. So obviously we have to produce triangles from our VZOME model. So VZOME supports this by exporting panels only. So let's make some panels. We'll start with just a simple icosahedral structure and I'll select three balls and make a panel and use symmetry to make all of my faces. So here we clearly have a bunch of triangles. We now can try the new tool under the tools menu called Validate Paneled Surface. The tool has three different outcomes. If the surface is valid, all the balls and struts will be hidden and you can show them again by hitting the Show Hide button. You can also just delete them finally. So here we have a valid model. So that's the success mode. What about failure modes? Well, there are a couple different restrictions that are tested by the tool. The first restriction it tests is the so-called two-manifold property, or water tightness, you can think of it as. If we make a hole in our model intentionally, and then pretend we didn't notice it, the tool will find this hole when it validates. So if you see all of the panels disappear when you apply the tool, they're not gone, they're hidden, so you can show them again. This means that VZOME has detected some edges which do not have the two-manifold property. It's very simple. It means every edge must join exactly two panels. So these three edges that have been highlighted with struts each have only one neighboring panel, so they violate the property. Now there's another way that this property may be violated if you have extra panels. So let's make an extra panel here on the interior of our object. And again, we'll apply symmetry and we'll run the tool. And now you see why the panels are hidden when we find this violation. You have to be able to see the edges where the violation happened. So we'll just simply hide one of our triangles, get rid of the offensive panel, and let's restore the triangle. Okay, so now we're ready to go again. We'll validate the surface again. There's a subtle form of this uh, two-manifold violation that can happen. So here we have a sort of a tetrahedral structure that looks fine, looks watertight. You may notice that kind of extra edge there, but perhaps it won't disturb you. Let's try the validation. In this case, we see what looks like two struts and three balls, showing apparently two edges that violate the property. What's going on here? Well, if I delete this ball, you'll see that it's not actually two edges, it's three edges. We have the edge of this, we have the long edge of this triangle, and we have the shorter edges, which are hard to select, of these two triangles. Even though that triangle is infinitely thin, as far as the mesh properties go, this is an invalid mesh. It's easy enough to repair this mesh either by adding vertices, adding panels, removing panels, etc. Okay, let's now look at the other property that can be invalid in a mesh. So I'll go ahead and make my mesh invalid. So here we have a, a, a hole in our panel we want to repair. I'm going to intentionally panel this up 
with the wrong orientation. So I'm going to click in the clockwise direction. Incidentally, the easy way to remember the direction that you want to select your panel vertices in is to look at this icon. It's, uh, it shows a counterclockwise loop and that's the, that's the order you want. So I've used a, the wrong order here and if I create this panel and now check my validation, I get a different result. The panels are not hidden, but I still have some edges and vertices shown. These edges violate another property, which is the orientation of the panels that adjoin them. So this edge sh is shown because these two panels are not oriented consistently. Well, what does that mean? How can we see how they're oriented? Do they, they look the same? Well, there's another tool that you can use now, also new in build 34, under the construct menu, which is called panel normals. So for all selected panels, it will render the normal vector as a strut. So we can see that for this panel, the normal is pointing outward. And since there's no other, no other violations reported here, all of these panels must be pointing outward. We can, we can check that pretty, pretty easily. However, this panel is not pointing outward. If I hide the panel, you'll see the normal pointing inward. So let's delete that panel and create it in the right orientation, apply our validation, and now we're ready to go. Okay, now we're ready to export the file as STL. So VZone will ask us where we want to save it, and I'll call it test export, and the STL suffix will be added automatically. Now we're ready to upload our model file to Shapeways. You'll need to have a Shapeways account to do this, and if you do have, you'll see the upload button. So let's upload our file. The most important thing to do when you're preparing your upload is to make sure you set the right units. The VZOME STL export is always in inches. If you want your model to faithfully represent the sizes that you saw relative to zone ball sizes in VZOME. Then we select our STL export file and it gets uploaded as soon as we click the upload button. And you can see that Shapeways is calculating prices and printability. So as the sizes appear, you know that you're on the right track. You should check these sizes and make sure they correspond to what you expect. In this case, we have a volume of about 12 by 12 by 12 centimeters. Eventually, Shapeways will show a 3D rendering of your model here, but we don't care so much about that. What we do want to look at is the materials and the prices. The cheapest material is versatile plastic. You can see that the model we printed is very expensive and that's because we've got a solid ball of plastic essentially that is um, about six inches in diameter. So there's a couple things you can do to control the cost. Uh, one you can do right here in Shapeways and that is to resize. So if you know you have the right shape but you want it maybe to be just a um, say one inch in diameter, let's try that and let's see how it comes out. If we check the versatile plastic prices again we see that we're down to something reasonable, only about $6. There are other things you can do um, in terms of your model to make it more cost effective. The most obvious one is to make the object hollow, um, add holes, make it a uh, mesh structure, that sort of thing. All of those require a little bit more sophisticated modeling in VZone, but they're all possible. So that's it for today. In my next video I'll show you how to make some of those strut models that I showed you, starting from some starter models that will be built into VZone very soon. Thanks for watching.